on the for the next five years, I'm going to focus on getting it right. I'm going to build the network to, to a certain level, build some assets, build some passive income. I'm going to go all in so that we are never in this position again, right? Sanwanani, everybody, and welcome to the limited edition of Mindset Profits podcast with myself, Khadija Sneeman. I had to make it sound chic and good. But on my left, uh, what's good, guys? What's good? It is the editor, Kenneth Sarelo, but Wawanka Vangokas, Wawanka Vaganesta, Eastside Trapper, you know what it is. Yeah, so you guys are about to learn a whole lot about how we move as a team. And we got the new guy over here, Kipuruaga, Kima Kimji, Taki Joshua To. What up? What up, everybody? My name is Josh. Joshua Do is the call me. Yeah, I don't have any nicknames, man. It's just that. So I'm the fun person in the team, by the way. I've been the laugh of the party. <laughs> but hear me out. Hear me out. So on today's episode, we actually have a very interesting guest. I don't think you guys know him. But. Allow me to introduce the big boss, uh, <laughs> the person that makes things happen. The reason why we are sitting here today as a team, it's all because of him, Mr. Masaku, sir. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> One day I'll be as fun as you. Yeah, okay, fine, <laughs> Put it in practice. <laughs> but yes, so I asked, I asked you a very interesting question this morning. And uh, oh, by the way, I'm just going to shoot straight into it and we're going to start having this conversation. What are we talking about? No, relax. You see, that's the problem with our boss. He always <laughs> gets to the serious stuff. Very relax, we got you. Okay. So I asked you a very interesting question in the morning to ask you that how do you define success, right? Do you remember? I think I do. Uh, you divided it into two, two aspects, actually, to say mm -hmm. that for family, on a personal scale, assets matter for you, mm -hmm. uh, health, and family, mm -hmm. that's on a personal scale. On a business scale, we were thinking we were there. We were there. He spoke about assets, he spoke about finances, he spoke, he spoke about family. Uh, what else? Touching lives. Touching lives, which and is, finance. yeah, it speaks to impact. And then, yeah. So we have a very important question. I think you're the one who's going to ask it. Or should I ask it? Yeah. Okay. So the question is, um, what is the most important asset that one has to have in order to become successful? Yo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I said assets, I wasn't thinking that far for you guys. Okay. All right. So I guess you want to, I'm letting you ask the random questions that popped through your mind. Yeah. I'm praying and hoping I will not need water and coffee. <laughs> I, I guess you will. You will. Because <laughs> we're going to put you on a hot seat. Yeah. All right. In terms of assets, if you were to ask me the most important assets a person can own, I would say that by far, this is by far the most important asset to any human can I, can I being. You, remember yeah. Remember, we are just 20 year old here. Yeah. Yes. I will. Where, where? Are you speaking to the youth? So you can just give us anything <laughs> that we can. <laughs> oh, okay. So I shouldn't talk about super expensive things. Anything that we no, can. No, but uh, let me answer. If yeah. if you if you don't like the answer, challenge me. Okay. You have full permission. This is your podcast. No problem. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd say the most important asset is you, which means the best asset to invest in in any day, any economy, any year is yourself. And how you invest in yourself is you build your competencies, your skills, you build your communication skills and ability to talk and get people and network and stuff. You build your knowledge base, you build your skills, because you're spending money 
and growing you and developing you. Why I say that is there are people that will buy houses and something happens. People that will start business, something happens. People that will get a good job, something happens along the way. But one thing that you always find consistent with people who have invested in themselves and have developed themselves is the speed at which they bounce back is always faster. That's why the best investment in yourself. When you're young, it doesn't make as much sense because you cost through life and you're thinking, yeah, every day I'll take it every day as it comes. But what you ignore and you get to see 10 years later and you hit 30 and you hit 40 and you're hitting 50 is that, oh, 10 years have passed. I haven't accrued any skill that can get, pay me way more than I was 10 years ago. I don't know enough information that can take me to rooms that I can speak more important language because you didn't invest in yourself. So the number one asset that will drive your future is yourself. Everything else becomes a consequence of how well you've done that investment, how well you've taken yourself seriously and build yourself up. So it's good that you're asking me this question <laughs> early because you're young, you have time, to fix it. <laughs> Actually, I'm thinking about it. I'm almost 30. I can fix that, I guess. <laughs> but hmm, now that you've laid that down on the table for us, Nick, uh, I want to believe that you've invested in yourself enough. I've tried. Okay, no, that's not the answer that I'm looking for. <laughs> but now, I, I, I guess investing in yourself could also be related to health playing a factor in that, right? And I think that is one of the words that you gave me that defined success to you this morning. Uh, I'm going to repeat them again. You said assets, family, and health. This is on a personal scale. And you just answered to say that uh, the one asset that a person can invest on is yourself. Now that you've invested in yourself for so long, um, and now you have like these personal values or things that define success for you, and you have already accomplished them, how do you now balance out uh, being a family man, you're a dad, number one, mm -hmm. and the business? So you're a father to a business and you're a father to your kids. And uh, guys, let me tell you something about Mr. Maseko. Actually, now that I have the chance. Are we dropping gossip now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, Mr. Maseko is a very busy man. Ask me, I know. <laughs> if you send him a text on Monday, he'll answer you on Friday. <laughs> And I think my, my, my biggest concern, you know, we always hear people speaking about the work-life balance, right? My, my biggest concern or my, the biggest thing that's running in my mind right now is that since now uh, you were always so busy trying to make this, this business work, I mean, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be sitting here number one. So um, that's where now the impact from the business comes from. So he impacted our lives. But we can't now shy away from the fact, from the fact that he's a family man, he's a dad, he has kids that he needs to take care of. So how do you now balance that, uh, having to take care of these kids and having to take care of your other babies at home? <laughs> you forgot to say that these kids are problematic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these ones are Arab, that's the problem. <laughs> Oh, that's a powerful question that was making me uh, look for water and coffee. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I am busy. So I I got to introduce myself this weekend to a group. We're having some team building, a, a hot spread. And it hit me with, Yo, you are super busy. Because they were asking us to list the things that we're doing. And I was saying, I'm a PhD student, I'm an author. Hey, <laughs> Please, did you guys get that fax? Yes, I am due to finish mm. next year, December. Mm. So, travel doctor. Yes, sir. I will not play about my title. <laughs> <laughs> you have to call it right. <laughs> Thank you. So, PhD student, podcaster, radio show host, yeah. entrepreneur, and I'm doing multiple coaching programs with incubators and stuff. And as I was listing those, I realized, yeah, ne? Face family in that. You are doing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So in terms of family, I will answer in two phases of my life. There's a phase of my life where I think I did excellently when it comes to family because I gave family a whole lot of time. 
but my problem was at some point business got bad it was before covid actually yeah it was before covid for some reason it was like the the work of the devil or something <laughs> left right and center clients just falling apart and stuff business went down to the point where i couldn't keep up even with my bills it's a couple of years ago and when i got to that point i started to sort of feel a sense of resentment for how much i was spending with family and saying now nah, this is the consequence now everything is falling apart because you know, i dropped the ball which it's not the family's fault it's just how i was working how strategic i was at the time so i gave myself time and talked to the kids and the family to say on the for the next five years i'm going to focus on getting it right i'm going to build the network to, to a certain level build some assets build some passive income i'm going to go all in so that we are never in this position again right so from that time i think i got some of the grace although my son doesn't understand sometimes he wants me there <laughs> all the time yeah. He wants to come and shoot the podcast with us at some point. Let him come. Actually, it would yeah, be interesting so to have him. Yeah, so I guess we'll have him right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can grill us both. So I guess my answer is <clears throat> for me to figure it out and fix and pull off some of the things that you see, I didn't get it completely right with family. So I had to prioritize more on the business side and writing the books and the PhD. And it took a whole lot more of my time than family but i do make time for the kids whenever i'm there i do play i do Thanks. yeah wow. I, not so well though because <laughs> <laughs> look my son wants to play for three hours and <laughs> yeah. now in like 20 minutes i'm bored <laughs> with yeah. the game already yeah. so yeah i it's allowing myself to not have the complete balance so that I fix something and then hopefully I don't get addicted to the work and spending time with you guys to forget to go back okay Baba? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, what? No. <laughs> no I just wanted to say that I feel like also um eh uh, Oh, we called him old man, by the way, putting it out there. But okay. I think the difference between that, I feel like people from your generation are kind of getting right right now is transparency. Yes, transparency in a sense that um, before parents wouldn't see it fit to have a conversation with kids to tell them, to say to them, you know what, um, I'm currently working, but main reason I'm working is because I want to achieve A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it becomes a little easy to understand. Um, you get parents that would just disappear and go to work and then the excuse would be how can i get to spend time with you if i'm busy working i'm busy trying to make ends meet or trying to provide for the family but i, I it's a thing of now giving your child sense of understanding i think also as much as you're saying that your son is complaining it's a thing or um if somebody asks could raise your dad they can always confidently answer to say that no papa go miracle um, and he's currently working on abcd if it's not a thing i thought oh no he's just an absent father because I think that also that term of the absent father, absent parents and whatever comes from that thing of parents not being transparent with their kids to say, you know what, I'm busy working because I'm trying to make a better life for the both of us. So I really admire that you had the conversation with the kids to say, um, you saw that the past so many years, A, B, C, D, E, F, G and failed, but I really want to get this thing right. And I don't think um, it also built to their character also as much as you might think that now um, it's something that you're doing for yourself or an asset that you're building for yourself. It's something that can that, that can actually be transferable to the kids also to say that uh, one day also they are able to commit to certain things in their lives because they saw you commit to, to something. So hmm, my boss is really okay. smart, guys. Okay. okay, when it comes to transparency, what you're talking about is actually valid. Um, what you're speaking to is... It's, it mostly has to do with seasons. Mm -hmm. What season are you in? So I, I just have a few questions, man. As as a youth, you know, 
I'm planning of, on, on having kids maybe in the next like probably two to three years. <laughs> Guys, I'm still young, but I'm just planning my life, you know. <laughs> Sally, no. <laughs> Sally, no. <laughs> you see, I mean, like, let's in see three where years, this is going. Three years. <laughs> so, right now, I'm in a season where gosh, man, it's all about grinding and like working hard. And you spoke to building yourself. Building yourself, yeah, you are the most important asset, right? Yeah. Okay. So since you found yourself in that position where you had kids and at the same time your business was failing, right? Yeah. Mentally, what, how were you able to like um, deal with that situation mm. and understand what season you were in during that particular moment? I think, let me start with the first one the first version of your question i want to have kids <laughs> <laughs> the best time for you to be asking that question is actually now because you have a lot of free room to play and make mistakes mm -hmm. and try out things because the kids are not there that pressure looks significantly different when you've got bills to pay and kids that are saying daddy i'm hungry so <laughs> this is the time <laughs> This is the season for you to actually focus on getting it right and developing yourself and putting together the fundamentals. You want to look at your life as building blocks and your career building blocks. What are the, if I'm building a building that's going to stand and give me financial freedom for the rest of my life, so what are those building blocks looking like? The skills you need to be accruing, the people you need to be knowing, the knowledge you need to be accruing all the time. Because if that is constant, then where you are right now and where you are in 10 years' time is the same place in terms of your ability to generate money. And that's a dangerous space because that's when you're starting to look for these building blocks that you're supposed to be doing 10 years ago. Yeah. But there's bills to pay. So emotionally, then it takes you to the place where you are worried about. In terms of once you find yourself there, I won't lie and say it's easy because... Look, it's, it's, I think the painful part is knowing that the, you don't, you're running out of food at home, knowing that you are not uh, having money for school fees for the kids and the kids are going to be chased away. And I remember a time where I wasn't paying fees when I was young, primary school, yeah. and the school would call out the names of those that haven't paid so that, painful, yeah. so that you can exit. So I remember how that felt like. Now, when you find yourself then in a position where you know that that's what your kids are going to be facing. As a man, it doesn't land quite nicely. So emotionally, it wasn't easy. But what I've learned and always taught myself is I am in a better place, in a better position to make good decisions if I'm not depressed. So I try as best as I can to find a way to stay motivated, to find a way to stay focused. If it means talking to some people, watching some YouTube videos, to just shift my focus back to a state where I have the best chance of getting out faster yeah. than pity partying and focusing on the problem a bit too much. Okay. So that, that is what is happening. And I will tell you, it's not easy to do that. So how does a young, let's say, tap or kahis or, you know, in the ekas, you know, um, change their mindset and not only change their mindset, but be surrounded with people that have a much better mindset compared to their mindset? Give it like you say. What's Disclaimer. Your, what's He's your... the happiest adult I know. <laughs> There's no way. There's really so, no so does it mean that most adults are actually? No, they're um, getting it right. Okay. Listen, all I'm trying to say is that, um, like you see, he's saying that at some point he decided that you know he makes better decisions when he's in a good position. So he vowed himself to always see himself in a better position, and. I'm problematic. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who's watching can I'm, sense I'm where we are. I'm in a very frustrating team. person. Listen, you know what he does? I'll get there on a Monday morning and he'll be so calm. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, he's so upset, he's so upset. Then I get there and I'm like, Dumelang. As soon as I say Dumelang, I just know that I did something that's wrong. Obvious. And he'll be like, what time is it? I'm like, it's like, 
I'll talk to you later. And then he's done. When he comes later, he's going to say to me, what's your problem? In the happiest smile, I'm like, but how? How? What would you rather me? I do? <laughs> no, but I, I, I don't know. You just, you just make it. I don't, you know that people with auras that just radiates to the entire room and you can just adapt to that. Like, even if you get there and you feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm just, I can leave the house saying, <laughs> then I get to the office and then he's smiling. I'm just here like, yo, I'm so disappointed because I was getting at you. I was ready for you to get to say, Mary, you didn't answer me from Monday. You just answered me. So you've come prepared for fights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes, but... He will never give you that satisfaction. I think that's also one thing that I admire to say that, you know, sometimes you wake up uh, to with the intention of being a destructive person, but you meet people like this that actually show you that, you know, sometimes destruction is not all that. Yeah. Uh, so you were asking about how does the table build the mindset? Yeah, how does a kahis or a table in the township? Because a lot of times you find that there are kids that want to be in places or in rooms where there's actually, you know, an insightful and impactful message which is given. You know, they want to be surrounded with high achievers, but they can't. You know, maybe because, I mean, they don't have the money situation. Sometimes you find out they, that they cannot watch the podcast because they don't have the data to actually, you know, get into the internet or even access a cell phone, yeah. So <clears throat> that's my question. How does that kid gain access to such environments and opportunities. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You asked the question and the guys were like, yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can relate, but yeah. <clears throat> All right. So I can look at three scenarios. Number one, there is social media and there is YouTube and there's TikTok, what many people ignore in this modern era is you can be actually quite intentional about who you follow. Okay. And that simplifies the process for you learning. If you go to your TikTok for now and say sales tips, you're going to get hundreds of content creators that teach you about sales and some of their lessons are amazing. Okay. But people don't do that. Yeah. If you go and say how to start a business, you're going to get hundreds of people that teach you short clips, one minute, that won't cost you too much of your data. You can do that on YouTube, you can do that on any platform pretty much. But people don't do that. And instead, they let the feed propose stuff and most of the stuff that comes first before you intentionally search is stuff that will distract you. It okay. will entertain you, but it will not develop you. So for that person, yeah, I would say the free or low cost starting point is be more intentional about how you use social media. Okay. You can use it to develop yourself, right? Not saying don't enjoy yourself along the way. Just enjoy the platform, but also know that you're giving yourself time each day to be learning. Now, that's the first scenario. A second one that I can throw in there is most times we never go to platforms like Eventbrite, Cricket, and any websites in wherever you are that tells you where the next events in your area are. Mm. But if you go to those, you're going to find a lot of events in Joburg, in Cape Town, in Kitteban. You're going to find events in your area. Okay. You just put the filters and say, I'm in Pulukwani, what events are coming up? People advertise those events. Some of them, half of them actually, if I can just estimate, half of them are free. And that gets you into the rooms okay. where a lot of people that are interested in what you like go to. So because we are not searching in the platforms, we don't get to find out of the free ones. Mm. And if you do find out of the free ones and you go, you also then have to be more intentional about just talking and engaging with the people that are there. Okay. That's like the second. The third layer, I would say, find someone that you respect, find someone that you value, that you think is in your area, 
and find a way to be valuable to them. They will always, they will always. I, I was talking to someone, he's actually going to come to the podcast very soon. Okay. A, a legend, oh. a South African legend, nice. actor. And say who he is, but believe me, the day you see him, you will remember. <laughs> this must be the person he was talking about, right? Okay. But he is an absolute legend, the kind of person that you think won't give me time or light of day. And I just went and said, I see you have a book out. Do you have a link that okay. we can click and buy the book? And it didn't. And I said, I could just create that for you for free and help you sell your book. Actually, I can promote your book in the podcast as well. Here's the podcast and we can talk about it. The only condition is it was read my book and then call me. So I've got the book, I'm reading it. What I was saying to him is, I found a way that I can be valuable to you. And he was willing to give me his two minutes. And that to me was like honor. Mm -hmm. And the lesson there to someone who's young, who's saying, I can't get into these rooms. It starts somewhere, but find a way to be valuable to some of these people. You can find an entrepreneur, a business person that's in your area is doing well. You go and just say, look, I, I want to intern, I want to learn from you how your journey started, but what I'm good at is TikTok. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I can do for your business in TikTok, right? Okay. They'll give you that opening. Once you're there, you then just become intentional about understanding. So how, how do the departments work together here, right? How did you start the business? And you start having those conversations. The learning curve that you get on there is on a seriously high trajectory. So find a way to be valuable to someone. Okay. Search for events in your areas. They are always free ones. And be intentional with how you use your social media. All right, Whew, interesting. Now that you spoke about value, a uh, question that comes into mind with me is now, how do you determine that value? Because it's a thing of, like you say, you know that you're good with TikTok, ne? But in most instances, because of now the content that we consume as young people, mm -hmm. uh, it's lifestyle, barely business, it's lifestyle, uh, vacations and, and beauty and all of that, right? So now mainly, and also remember that now content creation is a new thing in, in, in the market everywhere, in the economy. So people don't really know, especially now with the generational gap that we have, it's very hard for me to approach somebody that's not so open-minded to say that, but I know social media. Because remember, it was a thing of, a, if you told your parents that around about your age, you told your mom that you were going to be, you want to be a singer, do you think that she would have supported that? She would have said, heck no. Exactly. So you see, so now it's a thing, of, social media is a foreign concept to people that are within your generation. Allow me. <laughs> Allow me, allow me to use the, 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 the saying of your generation. Social media is a foreign oh, concept, oh, oh. right? And then you get us to say, whereas we know you can do anything and everything through social media. And it's been proven. I think um, COVID was a blessing in disguise. Yes, uh, rest, in, rest in peace to the people that lost their lives, their lives during COVID. But if we're looking at it from an economic perspective, we know that it was a blessing in disguise because even most companies um, started now having a financial balance in a sense that they didn't have to rent out their buildings anymore because now this online system was introduced. So now we have this digital world that's so broad, that's so big, and the people that are currently running the economy are not so familiar with the digital world. Mm -hmm. So now how do you propose this conversation to say to them that um, this is what I know how to do from a digital platform and I feel like this is now valuable to you? Because believe you me, I've walked into rooms with people because the event thing that you're speaking of, I've done it before. Yeah. I've tried it. I've met so many people. Um, but now you introduce this concept to them and also it's the willingness to learn. Yeah. Um, I, I think we are currently, it's, it's within, I don't know, I'm not even going to put it now, pin this one into a generational thing. I'm going to say that we are currently in a state whereby uh, people are not really willing to learn. So it's very hard to now introduce something to a person to say, but this works. Uh, they expect miracles, one. And we know that now being organic, you know, for a fact, social media now building an organic audience, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. 
But now that we see these big people, we're expecting uh, the same thing is going to happen for your company. And already it's a thing, you have systems that are in place within mm -hmm. your company structure, right? And now I'm coming with a completely uh, different, what's, this, what's the term? Completely different approach. approach to it. Whereas I feel like, okay, since you've never done it before, it's an experiment. And most people are not really willing to experiment. And my, my question is now, how do you approach somebody that you know they might not be willing to experiment, one? Um, two, how do you now um, make these people see value in what you're doing? Because I can have the skill, right? I can have the skill, I can have the correct approach, but it does not mean that you're going to see that something that's valuable. And if you're selling yourself, be it as a brand, if you're selling yourself as an individual, you need to know uh, the right boxes to tick. And for now, it's a thing that we are in currently introducing this digital world to people that are currently running the economy, which is the people that the generation that's before us now. Cause My they, generation. Yeah, your generation. <laughs> your generation is the people with the money now. Uh, we are the junior employees in this economy, right? And we're trying to introduce the system to them to say, but listen, yes, you're generating X amount of income in your business, but if you try this, you can actually generate this times two. But at the same time, you don't know the correct lingo to use one because first you're not familiar with the, the business and the structure and the lingo and there's already that lingo that's registered in their head. Now, as one early 2000, how do you say to your mom, oh, mama, if you can actually use the content or go now have master classes, for an example, online master classes, where you can reach one, a broader crowd, mm -hmm. two, you expose yourself to a different audience and you are able to generate money from the comfort of your own home. Mm. But they feel like, mm -mm, it worked out better, it worked out fine. How do you now make that person, give that person a different perspective or change their mind with regards to that? Because I think that's the challenge that we have is that people, your generation, are not really ready <laughs> to experiment when it comes to these things. They love the idea of it because they see it also. Give it Thomas. They see it, but they're not really willing to learn. There are so many questions you asked in there. So now let's let's prioritize. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the most important question there? How do I communicate to someone who yes. doesn't see the value? The value. That was the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one was. Even you forgot the question. No, they say. Oh, the second one is like now approach, right? To say I can walk into that room right meet the correct people but now how do i approach because sometimes you only have two minutes to say hi my name is mang 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 you know i always say that if a video doesn't catch your attention within the first three seconds then there's no point okay so you've answered yourself capture attention but within how? the first <laughs> the question is how do i do that like I, it's something that i personally struggle with to say <clears throat> i can be in the correct room with the correct people but i never know how to uh, interact because also getting a result if it was an email or sending a text on Instagram to say that I can do ABCD for you it's easy <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to answer a little bit you know, based on my no the knowledge that I have I think one of the ways you can actually communicate to the gen the old generation is by actually doing something for them, like you said, doing something for them that can actually provide value, which means like, uh, be willing to work for free, man. You're still young, you're 21, you're 20, you're 25, you have nothing going on for you, you know. What, what is there to lose, man? You have nothing to lose. So just go out there and work for free. Work for free, free. just try and work for free and see what happens. And let me say, some people are actually going to give you, they're not going to give you an opportunity, but you have to be willing to knock, you know. Mm. You have to try in different places until you actually get um, noticed. Or noticed, you see. Okay. So I think that's one of the okay. things that I also actually did that worked for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Powerful young man. Listen. Powerful young man. Listen, <laughs> sitting with CEOs here. Yeah, you're sitting at boss level. Listen. <laughs> so, I think he's right. In terms of how you reach out to what doubting Tom. 
<laughs> they will not listen to you as long as you're coming with a fancy story. I've got this fancy software. It's going to do amazing things for you. Yeah, you're wasting your time. But if you've got, number one, a way of doing a demo on their business mm -hmm. or a way of doing a demo on someone's business is just showing them and you say, I've got something that I want to show you. I want to show you how it's working for another business. Mm -hmm. And then you put up the business and you show them, I will do one, two, three, and these are the analytics and this is what it does. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do it for your business for a week? You don't have to pay me for the week. If it works, we can work on an arrangement, right? So show them with a demo the best way you can. Give them a risk-free trial, and then you can talk of an arrangement if it's working. Because most of the times, you just come and you're pitching getting paid yeah. without pitching what value is going to come from them paying you and without also showing them that if you recruit me and I don't deliver, you're not tied to me, you're not afraid of CCMA. <laughs> Baba? Yeah. So what I think Tom do that. In marketing, it's called risk reversal. It's just taking away the risk from the client for trying out your product and how amazing it is and putting the risk on yourself and then communicating to them that I want to give you something to try out. I'll show you how it works. I believe it will get you great results, but I'm taking away the risk. The risk of paying and I don't deliver. The risk of a contract that ties you to me for a year and then you discover you don't like yeah. me. So let's take away the risk because I believe in the value that I'm coming with, right? So that's the best way to communicate with these guys. You can come and say, I can work for you for free. The work for you for free actually is like secondary. The at the foundation of it is, have you looked at the person and found what problems they have that you can solve? Yeah. Where they are inefficient, where they are not good. If I come to you and say, your product is amazing, but I see you have no landing pages on social media. This product can sell on Facebook, it can sell off a website, site but i can help you create those mm -hmm. so it's not content anymore it's just creating a way for them to sell their product and sell better or i know the one two three distribution agents right i could introduce you to them what's your commission rate for people that are sales people in your business now the language is a bit different oh. yeah. now you're saying if i get you more sales yeah. what, what are you already paying your own people because yeah. I only get on that board. I believe I can get you some good income. So you're not tied to just thinking about social media. Think about what problems you can solve for them and look at your own skills and competencies. Now, as you do the building blocks and you get into networking rooms, you are going to learn and meet so many people. Over time, you get to meet people that you, when I meet you, I know, actually, I should introduce you to that person. Yeah. Then my conversation becomes, all right, so I know that person and I know they can hook you up to something, right? Yeah. What are you paying your people? And then that intro starts paying you. So it starts from number one. Yeah. Invest in yourself now yeah. while you're young. And Nesta wants to take over. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, guys? Hale linke me so I Joe, Nanya go better deep questions, Baba feeding to So I just wanna know, Wang Zod, since William Chito Lin is so blind, what do you like doing for fun? Like what like no lie, like I just wanna know. Like what he, Yeah, what do you do? What do I do for fun? Yeah. <laughs> I was camping though. <laughs> So you're saying I should name things I do that I, are not Yeah, that that are not work related. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so I've I I used to be a soccer fanatic. Yeah. Used to be. Okay. Go watch some games. So I would do that. But the two teams I was supporting were not good for my mental <laughs> well-being. <laughs> no, it was pirates. I grew up pirates. 
No, no, no. The parents had a season where yeah, they were flying and uh, life, life was good for us. us. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. But then they they took quite the nasty dip. Yeah. The other team I was supporting was Manchester United. <laughs> oh, man. From childhood, through varsity, <laughs> through high school and all. We were the high rollers. Yeah. We owned the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, it was not good for my <laughs> mental wellness. <laughs> so I cut out the amount of time I spend watching soccer. Mm. And soccer was really the one thing that took over when I say I'm doing something outside of something pastime, something for fun. Either you're watching it live or you're watching it with friends. We go out, we watch, have some drinks and watch on big screens. Yeah. But it was a mixture of things revolving around soccer. Yeah. So that's what I was doing besides going on dates. It has to be mine. <laughs> money, not what Jola. Or no Jola. Man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> going on dates. Yeah, yeah, going yeah. on dates. There, yeah. there was a season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to, man. You had to. As much as, <laughs> as much as your businessman, you're still a man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So ah, that's, dope. that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, all, right, all, right, all right. When it comes to sports, do you think sports are actually a distraction? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I will get in trouble with Brighton. <laughs> Yeah, because I've got friends that now even bet. So it's a good pastime for them. You're watching soccer and someone is a lot at stake. Oh, you it's really it. personal. Yeah, their team is winning and you're watching them get depressed and you're thinking, Ganti, your team is winning. Yeah. Can, no, there's a ticket. That is. <laughs> there's, there's some 20,000 that's, that's about to go. But yeah, so... In terms of sports being a distraction, I would say it depends on how many hours you're giving it to. So it, the answer is different for different people. Mm -hmm. For some, it's a way to distress, it's a way to relax, it's a way to do something that you enjoy. Yeah. But for others, it goes beyond that. When I was a f soccer fanatic, I would watch on average three matches on Saturday on average, three matches on Sunday. Yeah. Now, a soccer match is two hours. Mm -hmm. So if I watch three matches Saturday, three matches Sunday, it means I've gone through how many hours in those two hours. days. Yeah. You a see now. Of that, yeah. So every weekend would look like that. If I travel for the match, you're adding more hours. And more hours talking to friends about the match because there's the two hours, there's an hour of talking about who's going to win. There's the match, there's the three hours of talking about who the ref messed up, who put this one, this one. So it it was at that level for me. And one thing I was not doing was taking care of my health. So when I stopped, what replaced soccer was going to the gym. And from there, I got super protective. No, like like someone here, uh, we see, I think. Going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> like one of us. <clears throat> yeah, these jackets hide a lot of things. <laughs> Some people are ripped away. <laughs> so it, it was that. I think for some people, it's toxic. It's at unsustainable levels. It's at dangerous levels. There's guys that during weekends go to Bethway and stuff in the morning and come back at night because they are watching soccer and they are betting, actually watching different types of sports, horses and all of that put together, and they are betting. For them, it's become an addiction, and I believe that's unsustainable. I am doing my PhD now, and I know the importance of just allocating some block times to do some studying during the week. 
And I wouldn't be able to do that if I was giving six hours to soccer on a weekend. Because by the time you're done, so you're tired. so mentally yeah. trained. Mm. And if you're a man, you supporter. No, no, no. <laughs> At least pirates is saving yeah. us. So yeah. now I can watch. Now that you're speaking about, about that and how toxic it could, could be for, for a person, uh, do you think that now having the correct habits, because I feel like that's a habit. You train yourself to say every Saturday I'm going to watch soccer or every Sunday it's mm -hmm. and it, it becomes a routine so automatically it's seen as a habit. Do you think it's very important and also how, it's two questions again, sorry. Okay. <laughs> and how do you now, now um, fall into the correct habits or habits that are beneficial for you? I know it can look different for everybody, but the basic, what, what would you say are the basic habits that could be beneficial for an individual, especially a young person? Because mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we have habits, if we're being honest. It's a thing of, um, we are, yeah, scrolling, except, <laughs> being, <laughs> except that part. But it's a thing of, uh, more than anything, um, when we speak to our fellow peers, though, it's a thing of, no, we need to chase the bag. We need mm. to chase the bag. But nobody ever knows how to chase the bag. Or it's a thing of, no, I'll go to Forex and go invest, and then, but I don't want to invest in the skill of actually learning. Yeah. So the... Why, why would you say, because it's important to like have the correct habits and how do you now achieve the correct habits as an individual, be it on a basic level or on a, I don't know, expert level? Right, so, I <laughs> so what I think, I, I, will, I will summarize this one and then we wrap it up and we're going to have another one. We'll, we'll put up a bigger group and fill the room and you guys can fire i'm gonna bring two more coaches yeah are we are we game <laughs> uh, disclaimer guys disclaimer disclaimer i will not be asking deep questions i like casual questions the deep questions are for these two casual questions casual questions for this entire podcast there was how to be better mindset I like, like, I just like about the food. I can honey, all of us want to be and a millionaire. And when you came in and asked what? What does he like to have? Yeah, that's for you guys. I'm, I'm a casual brewer. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, how would you handle your newfound fame right now? I'm going to know so about famous. My set to probably 100,000. Wang Ton. How would you handle your newfound fame? Ah, uh, yes. Well, to, no, to be honest, I don't think I'm there yet yeah. at the no, stage. No, 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 wait. No, you're not saying that. I am getting there. Wait. Oh, okay. If if you want me to put it that way. Mm -hmm. My point was, I, I'm not at a stage where I need to worry about it yet. Mm. But once you, because we're hitting 14,000 subscribers on YouTube ah, now, you ah, see. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is for the guys from the hood. Guys, Roberta 14 tower, ne? Yeah, Machita, go PA, go Pichegas, reserve Fitile Machita. Two more onwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, yeah, ne? I'm at 2K. <laughs> right, so hitting 14,000 14, is, yeah, it's quite a milestone. I didn't think we'd get there that fast within a year. So. I get where your question is coming from, but I have friends who I hang with sometimes who are on 100,000, some 300,000, some four or 500,000, and I, I would say they are famous. They're the ones that need to worry about that stuff. They're the guys that walk into rooms and people are calling their names. I'm not yet worried about it. So I guess I'm learning from them how they handle it. In the same way, they taught me how to just start on YouTube and improve as I go. And I took that lesson, embraced it, and I started. I'll take the same lessons that I pick up from how they handle fame. So I, I won't say it's a lesson that I'm, I've concluded. When it comes to habits, though, yeah, that's the one that we'll bring other coaches for. But mm -hmm. what I'll say is, Understand where you want you to take your life, what your goal is, what your goal is for your career, what your goal is for your health, 
what your goal is for relationships, what your girl, what your goal is in general. Once you know what your goal is, then the second question is, what do I need to learn to get there, right? The learning is where the habits will come from. So because you'll need to develop some disciplines around how you develop yourself so you become the kind of person that can achieve that goal. <laughs> All right. Because for most of us, if the hmm. goal is big enough, you know you're not yet ready yet to achieve it. You're not the kind of person that can achieve it. But with time, with proper disciplines, you can. So you just need to understand what the goal is for your life and for your career and for your business. And you'll see the gap in terms of what skills you don't have, what knowledge you don't have. Then you build habits around how you close that gap. So go deeper and make it more practical with coaches and a bigger audience. Since you guys said you want to grill us a bit more, mm -hmm. so create the platform. We go in there. All right. Just before we wrap it up, Nick, can I put you on the spot? Okay. Uh, I'm going to use the word recently because we all just meet, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you were to define each one of us using one word, ne, ne, uh -huh. what would it be? So one we're word. Gonna start, yeah. We're going to start with him. Nesta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One word. I'd say chilled. Yeah. <laughs> Why? He's always chilled. You can see no, his aura. It's going already. That's the thing. I don't like this definition. No, but you you asked the question. Okay. So you have to take that. <laughs> Chilled. So he is Mr. Chill. Please be very careful. I the second person would have to be you. <clears throat> can I say problem? I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> Can I say smart? Mm, I like that. Smart. I win. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Or oh, loud. <laughs> but you gave me three. Please pick one. <laughs> pick the one you like. Obviously. Which one do you like? No, it's fine. I'll keep it in my heart. I know why I'm doing this. Me, very strategic. All right. Uh, Josh, Josh, for you, I'd say resourceful. Mm -hmm. He gets the next English word, Rona, problematic children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, but you'll find, in, in a way, what I like looking at the three of you is you're at the beginning of your career. And you've got so much potential. You already have some skills that you're showing me, which are really great. What I want is for Aww. you to look at... Uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> look at how far you want to take your life. In terms of, at some point in the future, you might want to start your own business. At some point, you, you want to build some assets financially. Look at just your life by design because you're learning stuff now. As we work together, you're going to meet a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of them brilliant entrepreneurs. A chance to approach them. Do not be zombies in the room. Talk to them and ask them good questions. How has business been for you? How did you get started? Were you not afraid to get started, right? How is it like as a woman in the sector? What do you do? What are the challenges in that sector? You are going to learn some serious stuff from the entrepreneurs that I'm coaching. A lot of them, some even coach me along the way as well. You've seen some of the brilliant people. Yeah. Some are in the podcast, right? So understand that this is a platform for you that can transform and change your life if you are intentional. But it's very easy to be complacent and just coast through and miss the opportunity. So you're smart now. Yeah. But you'll be scary smart 10 years later if you are super intentional. I hear you. Because when we talk to people at the podcast, you guys are there. You can actually say hi to them and get to know them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One or two of them will change your life. Ah, that's facts. 
Uh, I, I agree with that, asking about intentional. But sometimes casual, casual conversation also works. No <laughs> lie. No, I'm not saying, I'm not defending myself. I'm just saying, you don't have to vibe eh, and ask these business people and be like, hey, how did you get uh, a million? I mean, those are important <laughs> questions. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes you have to ask the bro, Acho, you know, what do you like doing, dog? You know, like, be a you see why I say chilled. Yeah, be a human being, dog. You know what I'm saying? How do you think I got here to Mercy Profits? How did I? Okay, I'll tell you. How? Chill. He was probably like, hey, bro, it's <laughs> <laughs> He says, no, bro, I can help you. Hey, bro, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy thing is, crazy thing is, I done exactly that. It was just a matter of, hey, Vincent, bro, what's up? Who's up? And I saw him, like, just uh, shooting with Slu, I guess. Shout out Slu, by the way. Anyway, we were there at the station. I was like, hey, Joe, Juna. Like literally, what you do? Mm. Uh, I'm about to shoot. You wanna try? I fit. I don't know nothing about camera. I whatever. Let's do it. You know. So long story short, Serili here shoot our content. I'm representing the Jiras. Jiras, aye. You want pro? You want pro? You want pro? Wrap us up, you guys. Who's yeah. closing the podcast? Let's share it. Let me wrap it up and I'm gonna share it. All right. Thank you very much for tuning into episode yeah, at two thousand. Uh, we'll definitely be back with all the coaches. We heard him, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, sir. see you guys in the next episode. But please remember, number one, you're an asset. Number two, be resourceful, identify problems, and yeah. And uh, number three, CEO music coming soon. I'm about to drop some new stuff. So check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to charge you. him for that. It's fine. I'll send him an invoice for that. <laughs> I'm charging him. I work here. Don't. I'm charging <laughs> you for that. <laughs>